All right, and welcome to the first tutorial for this section. We're going to look at this first objective in this first one uh, to describe the multiplicity of zeros for a function. So we're in the section 3.2 in our textbooks now, and uh, we're talking about polynomial functions. Polynomial function graphs must be continuous. And uh, I'm not going to get into the exact definition of continuity right now, but basically that means that the graph has to be a nice smooth curve uh, going up, down, or whatever, like nice hills, valleys. This is a polynomial. Yay. Let me give you a couple of examples of a graph that would not be a polynomial. For example, let's say we got this guy. Whoop. This is not a polynomial, and the main reason for that is because we have a jump right here. So this is not, not good. This is not continuous because clearly I had to pick up my Promethean pen to be able to draw it. Okay, another reason, let's draw this one. Okay, this is not a polynomial as well, and there are actually two different reasons. One, a polynomial function will not have a sharp turn, which is what this is called, a sharp turn. You can almost um, cut yourself right there on that part of the graph. So you cannot have a sharp turn, and like I said, it has to be continuous, so you cannot have any sort of breaks in the action like a hole that's right here. So polynomial functions are nice, smooth curves that go on from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Okay, let's talk about the zeros of a function. Now, zeros has a bunch of different synonyms. Zeros we might be talking about. That's the same thing as talking about x-intercepts. That's the same thing as talking about roots. And just the generic solutions or answers. So there's like four different words we could really be talking about when we're talking about zeros. Zeros, x-intercepts, roots, solutions. Okay, let's draw a nice sketch here and try to make yours um, like mine here. I'm going to draw this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to come back up, and I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go back up like this. Okay, because I want to show a couple different examples here. I'm going to put dots right here, and right here, and right here, and right here, and here. Okay, so try to get your graph to look like mine. I want to talk about what's called the multiplicity of zeros. And since zeros are ultimately x-intercepts, we're really talking about how this graph is um, interacting with the x-axis. So for example, this very first zero, that's just a regular type of zero. It's just going straight right through the x-axis. There's just one zero right here. Nothing funny going on right there. That's just one zero or one x-intercept if you want. Okay, but this is an interesting interaction with the x-axis. In fact, it doesn't actually cross through. It just touches. It just is tangent to the x-axis. It just kisses the x-axis right there. This is a special type of multiplicity, and this is called an even multiplicity. This is an even multiplicity. And what that means is there has to be an even number of zeros or roots or x-intercepts right here. It's not just one like this one where it just goes straight through. It, there has to be an even number. So there's going to be at least two. At least two zeros when your graph interacts with the x-axis like this. Okay, we're going up to this next one, and this is irrelevant today because this is a y-intercept, so please do not be distracted by that. And then we get to this interaction, and this is a different interaction, again, than this first one, which just goes straight through. This second one, which just is tangent to the x-axis, this one I like to call it wiggling through the x-axis. It just kind of wiggles through the x-axis. This is an odd multiplicity, an odd multiplicity. And of course what that means is that there must be an odd number of zeros right here. So that means that there have to be at least three. It's not going to be one because we know what one looks like. It just goes straight through. Nothing funny going on here. An odd multiplicity will be some sort of a wiggle right in here through the x-axis. 
Okay, so there's at least three zeros right there. And then we're back to the same uh, one that we started with. This is just a regular zero, nothing funny going on right there. So if I wanted to add up all of the zeros for this function, take your time and go ahead and add up how many zeros might this function have. Some people at first glance might say that there must be four zeros because they see one, two, three, four x-intercepts, but we know that that can't be true because, first of all, I'm looking at the opposite ends of my um, polynomial here, and they're going in opposite directions, which means it has to have some sort of an odd degree. So it can't be four. It has to be an odd number, and it's not going to be five. If we start counting these, again, we've got one here. And then we have at least two here. So this is one, two, three. And then we have at least three here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have another one here, seven. So there could be seven zeros minimum for this function. But again, it's minimum because we don't know exactly how many are here. It just is at least two and has to be an even number. Okay, um, let's explore this even multiplicity again with a function that you've seen before. If we graphed y equals, I don't know, like x minus 3 quantity squared, that is the graph that looks like this, a parabola that's been shifted three units to the right. So it makes sense. We know that there are two roots, two zeros, two x-intercepts, and we also know that this function looks like this. So it makes sense that this is an even multiplicity right there when it's just tangent. And again, if you want to explore this one with the graph that you've seen before, like y equals x cubed, this is an odd degree. Um, the graph of this one kind of wiggles right through the x-axis at the origin. So hopefully it makes sense uh, to you that the odd multiplicity is a, a sort of a wiggle thing right in here. So let's put some numbers into our problem. Let's investigate this um, f of x problem. What's very nice about this f of x is that somebody uh, factored it for us, which is very helpful. So it's going to be a whole lot easier to find our zeros. Let's go ahead and list our zeros over here. Zeros come from our factors. Uh, the first factor I see is 5, but obviously 5 is never going to turn into 0, so 5 is 5. Okay. So x minus 2 is a factor, and that must mean that x could be 2. So 2 would be one of my zeros. My next factor is right here, x plus 3. Ooh, there's actually two of these factors. So I know that negative 3 would make this factor into 0, and now I know that there's actually two of them. So when I say that my 0 is negative 3, I want you to tell me that it has a multiplicity of of 2, because that's going to be important when we visualize this in the graph. You don't need to do multiplicity of 1 for all the ones that are just 1. Um, just not putting something there implies that there's just a single one there. And when I look at the last factor here, there's actually 3 of them, and I know that 5 minus 5 would be 0, so my last root or 0 would be 5, and there is a multiplicity of 3 for that one. OK, so I have my zeros here. And let's go ahead and put those in. I know I'm talking about uh, negative 3, so I'll just put that about right here. And 2, I'll just put that there. It's just an estimation. And 5, I'll just, man, put it out here somewhere. OK, so I know that it's going to be touching or possibly crossing through the x-axis at only these three points. Nowhere else. Do not cross anywhere else because these are the only three zeros. And I know something else. At the 2, it's just going to be crossing straight through. Now, I really don't know if it's going to be coming up or if it's going to be coming down. We'll have to talk about that in a minute. At negative 3, we have a multiplicity of 2, which means that we're going to be tangent to the x-axis. Now, again, I don't know if it's going to be doing it like this or if it's going to be coming from below like this. We'll talk about that. And 5 has a multiplicity of 3, so it's going to do some sort of a wiggle like this um, or possibly like this. Again, I don't know. What might really help us is to find the y-intercept. If we can find the y-intercept, that might help us to figure out what this graph is doing. So I'd like to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is a pretty simple value to find because every point on my y-axis has x equal to 0. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, negative 7, 0, 0. Every x-coordinate is 0. So really all I need to do is figure out what is f of 0. That's going to be my y-intercept. 
So my y-intercept is going to be 5 times if x is 0, then this becomes negative 2. And if x is 0 here, it becomes 3 squared. And if x is 0 here, it becomes negative 5 cubed. Now, that might be a pretty big number here, and we might need our calculator. Um, but ultimately, when you plug that into your calculator, I believe you get 11,250. Yikes. So that's a pretty high positive um, y value. And we'll just put that right there, 11,250. That looks about right. <laughs> so now that I know that my y-intercept is right there, that does help us. Because I know that now I need to be increasing from this negative 3 up to that y-intercept. So now, let's talk, look at the negative 3 again. It's a multiplicity of 2. So since I need to be increasing up to that to cross the y-axis, I know that we must be doing this, and therefore we must be starting our graph like this and being multiplicity of 2 right there. Now I'm not going to assume that this y-intercept is a maximum or anything, so I'm going to go past it, okay, just a little bit. So now I need to start coming down to this 2, and let's see how we interact with the 2. Oh, that's just a straight through one. Okay, so at some point I do need to turn around and come back down, so I'll do that, and I'm just going to come straight through that 2, nothing funny going on there. But I know that there has to be a turning point to come back up to this 5, and I also know that there's that multiplicity of 3 idea with that 5. So how you want to do that is obviously you got to turn at some point and then come on up and do a wiggle through the five. There's nothing else going on, so I'll just continue it up there and put my little arrow. Um, some people have, tr have trouble wiggling, so my suggestion here is don't aim straight for the five because then it's tough to wiggle. Come just shy of the five so that you have enough room to wiggle. I need to make sure that, um, you, that I can see the wiggle or that you can do that wiggle. Okay, so this is just a rough sketch of what this graph looks like, and the most important part right now is that you are able to show the interaction with the multiplicity with your zeros, okay? Another thing that we're interested in is our power function, and basically what that means is it's really just the highest degree, um, the, the term that has the highest degree. Uh, the terms are all kind of hiding in here because somebody factored this, but that's okay. We know that x cubed is the biggest term out of this factor, and x squared is the biggest term out of this one, x is the biggest term here, and of course that there's a 5. So x times x squared times x cubed is, fi is x to the 6th, and with the 5, our power function is basically 5x to the 6th. It's, it's helpful to know this. I know there's other terms, but the most important term is this biggest term right up here in front when it's in standard form. This tells us that since the leading coefficient is positive, my graph will be going in the positive direction ultimately, which helps us this way. And since it's an even degree, I know that my um, um, the opposite sides are going to be going in the same direction. Okay, so that's helpful to know. Okay, so let's look at one more in this section. Here's f of x now. Again, it was nice that somebody factored it for us. So we've got x squared, and then we've got x minus 2. So if we want to go find our zeros first, which probably should be one of the first things we do, our zeros, the first factor, I see that there's two of them, and 0 is actually the number that would make 0, um, and that's a multiplicity of 2 since there's two of them. And then my other factor, it's simply a 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0, so just a 2. I don't need to put multiplicity of 1. So I know over here in my graph that we're going to be touching or possibly crossing through here at 0. And over here at 2, we're going to be doing the same thing, touching it or crossing it. OK, let's see. Um, our y-intercept is actually not going to help us here, because that is the y-intercept, the origin, uh, 0 and 0. So that doesn't help us. So maybe our power function might help us. Our power function, I'll put it right here, our power function, again, is the most important term, or is the, the, um, the highest powered term. So we'd have to do a quick distribution. x squared times x is x cubed. So we're talking about y equals x cubed. That helps us, because now that I know that it's an odd um, uh, degree, I know that we're ultimately going in opposite directions on the left and the right. And since I know that it's positive, I am ultimately going in the positive direction. So I know that I'm going to be starting down here 
going through these zeros somehow, and then going up here. So that's very helpful. Okay, so at zero, I know that I have my multiplicity of two, which is that tangent idea. And since now for my power function, I know that I'm going upward, I'm going to be coming up towards that, not crossing. I'm just going to be tangent to it. That's what the multiplicity of two would look like. Okay, I know that I eventually need to turn again and go through this too, and I'm reminding myself, yep, that's just the regular old zero, and just cross right through the x-axis. I don't know how low I'm supposed to go. I could use other technology to figure that out, but I'm just going to curve and then go back right up through it. So that's a nice sketch of this function. Okay. So I feel like I've used the word turning point a few times now. So let's actually define what a turning point is. You might already um, realize it. Um, a turning point is either at a maximum, a local maximum or a minimum, um, a max or a min, where the graph literally turns from a decreasing graph to an increasing graph, or vice versa, from increasing to decreasing, I'm going to say or vice versa, which means it could be uh, decreasing to increasing. So that's what a turning point is. So if we look at the graph from up here, um, we actually have two turning points because we're increasing, 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 then we turn to decreasing, but then we turn again at this turning point uh, to increasing again. So there's one turning point here and one turning point here. And actually there's a, a, an interesting thing. If f of x or your function has a degree of n, whatever its degree is, let's say has a degree of I'll just say big N, then there can be at most N minus 1 turning points. So again, in this top one, the power function was x cubed. So since that was a degree of 3, that means that there can be at most 2 turning points. And it actually had both of them, 1, 2. It doesn't mean that it has to have them. That's just how many it could have. So you take 1 away from the degree, and that's how many turning points you could have. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial, and um, we'll look at some more stuff in the next one. See you in class. Thanks.